We'll go on our weekly update ahead of tomorrow's game against Dulwich Town at the National League South. Following a good win on Wednesday, it'd be nice to back it up back to back at home. Yeah, I think it's important to do that. Um, you know, it's a fantastic win on uh, Wednesday, but obviously it'll make it even better, you know, if we can push on and get three points tomorrow. And of course, Dulwich Hamlet, we were there only a few weeks ago, a tough game, and we really had to work for that win in the end, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, I, I said to you, I think, last week that for me, Dulwich um, should have really been one of the seven in the playoffs. I think the, the fact they're full time, you know, they've got a very good budget there this season. They've got some excellent players, good management team, mm -hmm. get on really well with Gavin Jr. Uh, and I think they'll be disappointed, probably a bit surprised because having watched their games, they seem to dominate a lot of games as well. Um, so, as we know, football sometimes you don't get what you deserve. And I've got to say, you know, the FA Cup game down here, I thought they thoroughly deserved the win on the day because they got players with technical ability that, on the, you know, as I said, Dulwich can be on their day anything they want to be. So I think it's going to be a, a cracking game down here on Saturday and I'm expecting a, you know, a, a decent game between two good sides. Does the fact that both sides have beaten each other this season and on their, their own patches kind of make an even game because both would really fancy the win? And that's the point I'm trying to make. I think Dulwich on the, on a given day would, would, would beat anybody uh, in this league. And that's why I think they'll be disappointed that you know they're not going to be in that top seven, it looks like, anyway, this year. Uh, I know Gavin will be disappointed with that as well. And he had high hopes you know, for this season. And you know they're, um, they're a team that are very, very dangerous. They can beat anybody on a given day. And um, you know, as I said, it's just been their, perhaps their consistency levels that, that they've been missing this season. Of course, heading now into February, and I feel like we're starting to get towards that crucial time of the season, 15 games to go, and as you say, about, about a third of the season or roundabouts left to play. Yeah, I've talked to you a lot since the start of the season that the real crunch time starts coming in March and April, really. Um, I think there's sort of eight, eight games to go at that period. Uh, and if you're there or thereabouts, you know, come the start of March, then you know, you're going to be in there at the end. And you know, what we've done you know, by winning Wednesday is an important win. Let's put us six points behind you know, the leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, deserved leaders, keep saying it. They thoroughly deserve to be where they are at this moment in time. And you know, we've got some tough games coming up. We've got to play Slough twice, who we've got a lot of respect for. Um, we've got, obviously, Dulwich. Uh, we've got Billericay coming up, St Albans. There's no game in this league that when you reel it off that, that's easy. So four big games left, really, in February, five maybe. Uh, and then we'll look at it at the end of February and see where we are. Away from tomorrow's game, but obviously still involved with it. Joe Forrest, who um, was involved obviously in that, that incident a couple of weeks ago, him and his dad are going to come down and uh, and take in the game. He's going to be our special guest for the afternoon. Yeah, I mean we've um, <clears throat> you know we've kept a very close eye on on Joe's situation. It was it was a real shame because I thought Wildstone's support uh, at our at our place you know was outstanding, um, and it, for it to be ruined by you know by one individual who goes and picks on a twelve year old. Um, you know, it, it left a big impression on the players and, and us as the management staff. And, uh, you know, we got a couple of really, you know, nice things lined up for him tomorrow. It's probably, you know, the the first day or first game he's felt well enough, you know, to come back to the ground. Uh, so we're going to make it a nice special day for him. Uh, I think he's going to lead the team out onto the pitch as well. And, of course, we've got his dad, Will, coming down. And, you know, this was, you know, this support that he's given us came from us giving out the free school tickets. You know, he comes down with a load of his friends as well from school. So... You know all the all the nice intentions, all the good intentions. You know of bringing him into this family football club. Um, you know it was ruined on that day for him, if I'm being honest. And uh, you know we just felt it was really important to, you know, to make him feel special, make make him aware that it's a complete one-off. Mm. Uh, even to the point where uh, Bairdy's going to be his bodyguard <laughs> after each game now if he comes down. So, you know, listen, all joking apart, uh, it was a serious incident. I know that the police and the CID are still. Uh, very much looking at to try, to try and prosecute and to find the person that's done it. Uh, and from my point of view, I'd say to any of the Wilson fans who know what's gone on, they that, you know they should say what's happened because it's totally unacceptable that you know a thirty odd year old man could uh, could go and whack a twelve year old. It's um it's cowardice really. And of course, we were trying to be as, as big a community football club as possible. And as I say, I know a lot of the schools as well are retreating the uh, the tweets about the the school offers and the games that are coming up. So mm. hopefully, we'll get we'll get the youngsters come down and hopefully support us. And hopefully, they'll catch the bug between now and the end of the season. It's happened. You know, yeah. you you've only got to look round at the ground now. And um, you know, our average gate what fourteen fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at least two hundred of those appear to be the school children. That, you know, myself and. Uh, and Richie Pope went to the assemblies and gave out the free season tickets. And it was something that we were very, very keen to do and get the community back involved at the football club. And 
is without question it's working. Um, you know, as I said, with specific regard to Joe, it's important, you know, to get him back to this football club and, and, and uh, you know, make him feel really comfortable and confident of coming back, as of course he should have done, you know, for the whole season. Away from tomorrow's game, some contract extensions. We've got Chris Paul and uh, Joe Cook signing on the line for next year. Yeah, two very good young players. You know, Cook is 19, I think Paul is 21. Um, still very young in terms of where the positions they play, centre-half and a midfielder. Um, with Paulie in particular, you know, we see so much good stuff from him in training. Um, perhaps that hasn't transferred into to game time yet for him. Uh, but Bairdy and I rate him highly. And, um, you know, I think that he he's one and Cookie uh, is another one amongst the other younger players that can definitely progress and, and make it into the first team of this football club. And I've said before, I think both of them have got the ability uh, to go higher again. So, you know, it's a... It's good for them, you know, it gives them some security, it knows that we like them, even though they haven't played loads of games, but it shows confidence from the club and from myself and Bairdy, you know, that they're going to be players here that we're going to keep a close eye on. I think them two as a pair kind of epitomise the ethos of this football club, getting good players, good young players and, and trying to progress them on to be the best players they possibly can be. I think Benny Reid's become a great example mm -hmm. of that, you know, 21 years of age, played level 7 or 6 football for Horndean, um, you know, if you're young enough, uh, and, and you're playing in a local area good enough, I'd like to think we'd know about you, we can scout you. Um, but yeah, I mean, Benny's a prime example of improvement. I think Cookie will improve, Paulie can improve. You know, and Alfie Rutherford's still only 21. Mm -hmm. People forget that, you know, because he's been around a long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we've got that base of 21, 22-year-olds that enjoy being at this football club as well. And, uh, you know, it's our job to keep trying to improve them. And like I said, if hopefully you know, push them all on to higher levels if they can. Paul, thank you very much. Cheers, Henry.